Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Louis Sung, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, ladies and gentlemen. We are actually going to be having a very special guest, our good friend from the Five Reasons Sports Network, another fellow contributor to the Dolphins side of things. It's Eric Weideke, who you have seen on pregame, postgame, and all sorts of other Dolphins content. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well this 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 nice uh, Monday evening. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Um, As anybody is going to be listening to this, it is actually Tuesday morning. So good morning, everybody. It's actually Taco Tuesday on Price Picks. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. I'll do the full read in a minute because that's how this thing always goes. But we're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins and the offensive line today. But Lewis, you may be asking, didn't we talk about that yesterday? Yes, we did. And we're still talking about it because there's a lot of different perspectives out there. Some people are not as worried about it. Some people are even more worried about it than normal. So I want to know what Eric's decision is on this. Where does he stand currently as of this moment? But before we go into that real quick, just want to go ahead and mention that this show is brought to you by our friends and sponsors at You Break Wheel Fix. You Break Wheel Fix is the complete automotive wheel solution. Ever parked too close to the sidewalk curb? You Break Wheel Fix specializes in the repair of damaged wheels from bends, cracks, or curb rash. Or maybe your wheels are faded or peeling. You don't need to replace them as You Break Wheel Fix can refinish them to like new. Offering complete refinish options through powder coating, machining, and polishing, You Break wheel fix is the answer to all of your wheel needs and if you're just looking to give your ride a new look you break wheel fix also offers many car customizing options such as new custom wheels and tires from your favorite brands performance upgrades window tinting and suspension modifications located just south of aventura you can reach mark and his staff at 305-748-0112 or online at youbreakwheelfix.com they are really active on all social media platforms at you break wheel fix so shoot them a dm on instagram facebook or Twitter and get an estimate in just minutes. So don't delay. Go to You Break Wheel Fix and start customizing your ride to show off your Dolphins fandom today. This show is also brought to you by PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is the revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares. Today is Taco Tuesday, so you're going to get discounted picks. There's also Flex Friday specials on Fridays where you can get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up. So use the promo code FIVE, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, that's promo code FIVE, spell that out, F-I-V-E. Go to pricepicks.com and get started winning today. Taco Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. The discounted picks will be coming later this afternoon. All right, Eric. So just a little bit of a recap from what I talked about yesterday. I talked about how Mina Kimes had went on ESPN and she basically kind of looked at the the host funny when he asked, have the Miami Dolphins done enough to keep Tua safe in 2023? And she just kind of gave this blank look for a couple of seconds and like, well, they haven't done anything with the offensive line in 2023 as of yet. And it's very hard to argue that because in all reality, you can easily point at this offensive line and say, no, they haven't really done much much of anything yeah they signed some undrafted free agents after the draft yes they drafted ryan hayes with a seventh round draft pick but that doesn't really amount to anything in fact some would argue that the undrafted free agents miami actually ended up getting afterwards have more promise than ryan hayes himself so here's the question that i have for you my friend how concerned are you with this miami dolphins offensive line and do you think that they how what kind of a chance do they have to derail this season as we're projecting it Ooh. well firstly i'm gonna say i am if, if I were to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'm, I'm flat at 5 in terms of the concern. Uh, you know, Dolphins Twitter in the offseason is a very interesting place, you know, and I, th- I think the offensive line is one of those topics where Dolphins Twitter collectively just turns into that meme of the kid with his veins popping out. Like, you, like we just can't help ourselves when talking offensive line uh, for the Miami Dolphins. I, I'm, I am concerned about it. And, and if we're just judging it based on the offseason, did they improve the offensive line? The answer is no. Um, I think if we went into the off, uh, into the offseason and we wanted, we had a goal for the offensive line, I think all of us, I think at most Dolphins fans would have came in with a stated goal of, you know what, let's go into this, into the 2023 season with someone other than Liam Eichenberg and Austin Jackson as projected starters on the line. Heck, I think most offense fans would have taken one of those guys uh, having their replacement 
either signed or traded for or drafted this offseason. Um, but see it both happen, it, it both not happen is a little concerning for me. Um, Mina Kimes is absolutely right. The Dolphins didn't do anything more to protect Tua. However, I, I've always been of the opinion, number one, there are still plenty of really good options out there. I mean, you know, I like Connor Williams at center, love Connor Williams at center. Um, but for example, Chase Roulier just got cut out of Washington. And I know that the Dolphins, that's, that's, you, I'm using Monopoly money for that one right now because the Dolphins don't have the money for that. But it just highlights that there are decent options out there for them to still improve the line, although maybe not the substantial upgrades that a lot of people wanted. All of this to say, all of this to say, and it's going to sound like I've I've said nothing over the last three minutes. I I am concerned they haven't improved it, but there's still time in the off season between now and the start of OTAs, and I know that's not what not what people want to hear. All right, so now here's something that we can take into account because remember, all of this we're talking about right now, it's all valid in my mind, but apparently in the minds of Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel they're not quite as valid. And so here's where we have to decide how much do we trust our supposedly genius operators here? Everybody's had their doubts about Chris Greer over the years. Everybody, in, and I'm sure everybody is looking at his offensive line reputation and saying, this man cannot find offensive linemen if one bit him on the ankle. There's no way that Chris Greer is just taking his team and saying, you know what, this is enough for the Miami Dolphins to compete in 2023 on the offensive line. But at the same time, we're looking at what Mike McDaniel has said, and it was recently during that interview with Mike Silver during, I think it was the Combine, that he basically told everybody in the building who were all gung-ho about getting every offensive line under the sun just to make sure that Tua stayed upright, and he waltzed into that room and said, no, you are not going to focus on a center and a guard and a tackle and all those things that you need to you think you need to send her on we're going to look at weapons we're going to get Tyreek Hill we're going to get Jalen Waddle getting gear we're going to go get Raheem Mostert and we're eventually going to get Jeff Wilson and we're going to go get this guy and this guy and we're going to add so much speed to this offense that defenses are going to be panting and begging for air just like the Buffalo Bills were during the home game in Miami and to some extent it was justified to some extent because at the end of the day that decision it made one of the best offenses in the NFL. It made Tua the highest ranked quarterback in the NFL in 2022. And that's not even hyperbole. Literally, by statistical standpoint, Tua was the best quarterback in many statistical categories. He was over Patrick Mahomes in things like QB rating, which I don't like that stat on its face because too many factors go into it. But nevertheless, if you want to talk strictly numbers, Tua absolutely was on the top. So... Now we have to look at it from this perspective, and this is where I want to get your thoughts on this. If we trust Mike McDaniel, and we say that he knows what he's doing, forget about Chris Greer for a second. We trust Mike McDaniel. We think Mike McDaniel is smart. We think that Mike McDaniel is a breath of fresh air compared to the fake genius that was Adam Gase, who acted like he was smart, but really he wasn't. And then there was Brian Flores, who did not act like he was the smartest guy in the room. He just wanted everybody to do it his way anyway. So now you have Mike McDaniel, who's very calm, chill, laid back, and uses actual data to prove his points. And then it, he executes it, and somehow it works. So when he comes out with Chris Greer in a joint press conference and says, everybody is more worried about offensive line than we are, not I, we, as in him and McDaniel. How much do we take that into account and say, you know what, maybe we should just trust this process because it seems like they know what they're doing. Yeah, I... I... I I always tend to, you know, Mike McDaniel's proven his his offensive mind to me. I don't think, you know, I don't think there's really any Miami Dolphins fan that can contend that Mike McDaniel hasn't proven himself as an offensive mind in this league. It's it's one of those things. I think that there are tangible things that he can do and that he will do based on other things that we've heard in the in the off season to to kind of rectify and, and nullify a little bit of those these offensive line rules. First thing is I think Mike McDaniel is going to commit to run the ball a little bit more. Um, we heard Raheem Mostert talking about how Mike McDaniel was a little apologetic in the in the exit interviews about not running the ball enough. And, and I think Mike McDaniel's pretty pretty genuine when he says that. I think that there's spots 
last year where we would talk about them perhaps being able to run the ball a little bit more if they're willing to. So I, I, there are tangible things there for Mike McDaniel to kind of, he can kind of cover it up with, with a Band-Aid, you know, smoke and mirrors with the play calling. And I don't say that to mean that it's like gimmicky and that it's not effective. It, it is effective. It's smoke and mirrors because he's a magician. So between running the ball and then, you know, the Devon A-chain pick, it, it's very clear to me that Mike McDaniel's vision for this offense is to go even faster uh, than it was last year. And it's just one of those things that I, I, I have a hard time even comprehending that. So from that perspective, like I said, I'm, I'm not Mike McDaniel. If Mike McDaniel tells me that he's fine with the offensive line, I have to accept it. I don't, I don't love Liam Meikenberg and Austin Jackson being starters, but I trust him to cover it up to where it's at least passable. So do we feel like now with see with that perspective though? Because see, this is the thing: we can't have it both ways, right? We either are concerned or we're not concerned because we trust Mike McDaniel. You can't have it both ways. So the question becomes: what side wins out? What what? Because a lot of people like. They're, they're saying in the same breath that they trust Mike McDaniel, but at the same time, they're saying the Miami Dolphins are dumb, they're stupid, they're idiots for not going out of their way to make sure that the right tackle position and the left guard position are absolutely rock solid fixed. And you have been the kinds going on ESPN and saying, no, they absolutely did nothing and this could be what derails their season. Mike McDaniel doesn't seem concerned that that's going to derail their season. So how do we reconcile with that? Okay. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a step back here from everyone crushing the the Dolphins for an office for not acting on the offensive line. Let's make one thing abundantly clear, okay? The Dolphins go out and get Jalen Ramsey in the off season. Fantastic move. I think everybody can you know attest. Yeah, you know, nobody's arguing with that one. That's that's a game changing move, right? But we knew the limited resources that the Dolphins had this season. And so it's one of those things where, sure, the Dolphins can invest in, in free agents and, and do that. But if they're spending that money, they're not making the Jalen Ramsey acquisition. At least it would be extremely difficult to do both of those things. And so I think from that perspective, we got to understand that this roster is in contention mode, which means that they're not operating on 80, 90, 100 million dollars of cap space anymore this is a team that has to kind of be really savvy about what they do so i think from from their perspective they looked at it and i think if they're honest with themselves coming into the offseason they wanted to upgrade on on austin jackson and liam meikenberg but i just think with the resources they had they decided that upgrading other areas was was a better idea particularly because of the the offensive mind uh that they have uh, you know, with their head coach. And would you argue that, because we've heard a lot of people say, talking about, oh, there's this guy who's available in free agency and there's this guy who's available in trade. Would you argue that the actual candidates for who is out there, even earlier on in the process, were there any names that stuck out to you as this guy is absolutely a must get for the Dolphins? And maybe they didn't capitalize on it. Maybe another team picked up on it. Maybe it's just selective amnesia on my part. But I don't remember any guys that were available in free agency that we were looking at and saying, this guy would just absolutely rock solid fix the problem. Yeah, there were some, un there were some uh, restricted free agents. Terrence Steele of the Cowboys comes to mind. There was, that other, there was that other kid from Green Bay. I can't remember his name. But all those would have required at least a second-round pick, and the Packers slash Cowboys would have had the opportunity to match whatever we offered. So that, even that was not set in stone. So was there anybody that you were looking at and saying that this is the guy that will absolutely fix the problem, no questions asked? Because I don't remember anybody being available. Maybe you remember somebody. Maybe, maybe Orlando Brown in free agency, but that's... But that would have been moot because he refused to play right tackle, <laughs> like outright refused. Exactly. Well, so that's that's the only that's the only name I could even possibly think of. I, I mean, there are guys that you see get signed and kind of in hindsight are like, oh, man, that would have been nice, would have been a nice get for the Dolphins. But there's nobody that I think anybody really in the fan base was pining for, you know, going into the offseason. 
Although I will say, I, I'm sure Cameron Fleming has never been more talked about by any one fan base than, than, than this before in, in Dolphin Twitter right now. And right, quite frankly, again, I, I've been saying it show after show. I think that his signing is inevitable, really. I think that he's the only team, the Dolphins are the only team he's had a visit with, to our knowledge. He knows Butch Berry from Denver. So I, I see zero reason why once the Byron Jones money comes in that he doesn't get signed. So, but would that be enough to quiet the, the concerns? I mean, he played rock solid offense in Denver last season on both sides of the offensive line. So he could start. It's not like he can't, he could. And this offense and this offensive scheme is very offensive lineman friendly. So he could do it. Would that be enough to satisfy everybody? I'm not sure that it would, to be honest, because if the plan is to make him the swing tackle and they keep talking about how Austin Jackson's going to get the chance to compete, if Austin Jackson ends up playing anyway, regardless of whether Fleming is there or not, I feel like that's going to make people more angry than if the Dolphins had not signed Fleming at all. Uh, you could also uh, you could spin that in a more positive light. You could always make the argument because there's always there's all uh, listen I. I Austin Jackson's he is not good. I, I I recognize that, but let's account for the five percent chance that he actually plays well in training camp and earnestly beats out Cameron Fleming for the Eric. Role. Did you see the first? I, I I'm sure that there's Ron Caniff, my co-host on Pulse of Fins Nation. He's going to be rolling his eyes. There are going to be people who are going to be all talking like, "Oh, not this again." Did you see? The first four. Did you see his fourteen snaps against the New England Patriots in Week One last season? Did you see that he was practically as good as we've ever seen him play ever? Somehow, miraculously, I'm wondering if that's what the Dolphins are banking on—that that guy comes back. I think it's entirely likely that that's what they're banking on. I mean, he's he's what twenty four, twenty five. I know he was. Drafted. I don't know. No, no, no. He's still young. He was than that. Hold super on. young. Austin Jackson. He is twenty three years old. He is the same age, and and I know Dolphins fans hate this talking point, but he's the same age as some as some tackles in this draft were. I'm just. He's I'm 20, just He's going to be twenty four in August. He'll be twenty four in August. Yeah. So it's it's you know. I do understand maybe them thinking that, you know, injuries have stunted his development a little bit and there's still some something there uh, to Austin Jackson. We haven't seen it yet, but, you know, given given a full off season and uh, I hope he plays better. I, I don't I don't know how else to put it than that. I just don't know. I would like to believe that this all works out. I would like to believe that somehow the Miami Dolphins pull off a miracle with Austin Jackson and Lee Meikenberg. Maybe Butch Berry's hard-nosed style gets to them. I don't know. I really don't. Some players react differently to different coaching styles. We'll see. Yep. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping that this works out. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to call it here. Eric, thank you for joining me. And everybody, thank you very much for listening. For those of you who have not yet, if you haven't already checked out You Break Wheel Fix to take care of your messed up wheels, just give them a call at 305-748-0112 or online at youbreakwheelfix.com. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're on Twitter. You can get an estimate in just minutes. Just make sure that you mention Five Reason Sports, okay? So go to You Break Wheel Fix. Start making your ride look like the ultimate, the ultimate Dolphins fantasy today. And make sure you go to pricepicks.com. Again, today is Taco Tuesday, so there's going to be discounted picks for you to take advantage of. Today is the day, if nothing else, for you to go to pricepicks.com. Use our promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E. Sign up, deposit $100. They'll literally give you 100 of their dollars for you to play with before you even have to touch your money. So you could end up winning big time today. So again, that's promo code 5, F-I-V-E, pricepicks.com. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we will see you all next time for another episode of Finns Nation.